there's a backyard revolution sweeping the nation. Homeowners are transforming backyard sheds into fantastic spaces. From outdoor bars, to shed and breakfasts, to home office shed quarters, there's no limit to what your shed can become. I'm Luke Barr. I'm a he shed master. I'm so happy with this. I'm Sarah Farrell. Bringing all the design. Certified she shedder. Sarah and I are always trying to outdo each other, so we're teaming up with ambitious homeowners across the country to create their dream Whoa, he sheds. This is awesome. And she sheds. Sarah! The possibilities are endless. On this episode, we're in business. Hi. That's an intern. We're helping people take in guests. I would live here. I love it. And create their very own shed and breakfast. How's the wife feel? She's ready for the dust to, to clear, I'd say. But turning a shed into a hotel room is no easy task. Yeah. That'll work. It's our biggest challenge yet, so we have to get creative and go outside our comfort zone. Mm. And in the end, wow. we'll see if we can create the world's best shed and breakfast. So the question is, are you ready to shed? You! Hey, buddy. What's up? How are you? I'm living the dream, Sarah, one shed at a time. How excited are you for these next projects? We literally get to help these people turn their sheds into income properties. I am so excited about it. It's like helping them create a backyard hotel. I think the term you're looking for is shed and breakfast. That was good. So I am in North Carolina. I'm on my way to Amanda Albert's house to help her with her she shed. She actually wants to rent it out on Airbnb, which is awesome. I know how to do construction, but I've never had the chance to do my very own project. I'm really excited to have my very own project that is an eco-friendly shed and breakfast. So uh, come help me out, please. I love the idea of a shed that makes money. So does the guy that I'm on my way to assist. Bob Quigley lives in Lano, Texas, where he owns and operates a cattle ranch with a little bit of tourism thrown in. We have a shed in the back that we would like to be, you know, fixed up, but uh, in the thing it's better days. I've always thought it would be neat to uh, be able to fix it up as, you know, have a bed and breakfast type um, for guests. It'll fit the ranch and have all the modern comforts. You're gonna get outdone again. Those be fighting words, Sarah. You can talk the talk. And I can walk the walk. Good luck. You are going to need it, Luke. No, you're going to need it. You're going to need it. No, you're going to need it. Shut up. The Beast. That's an entrance, man. You must be Luke. Bob? Yes, sir. Nice to meet, meet you, me, man. Buddy. Nice to meet you. This is my wife, Tanya. Tanya, Luke. Nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you. How do you do? Tell me about the space here. Four Oaks Ranch has been in my wife's family for many generations. We have hunting guests come in from all over the country to hunt deer, turkey, ducks. We've got a hunting cabin that uh, it's rustic. It's good enough, you know, for guys to come out and hang out for the week. And we've got a shed in the back that's kind of what we're thinking is we really, we're missing out on an opportunity to have guys, if they want to come in and bring their wife and have a nicer place to stay, okay. um, you know, be a source of income for us potentially, and also just a nicer place to, to entertain. Tanya, how do you feel about Bob taking on this project? I'm a little nervous about it. Luke, if you think that he's going to be able to make this thing like super nice, comfortable, comfortable for women to be in, he's going to need some help, like a lot of help. How does that make you feel? I have a strong feminine designer side to me, and it you will see. Okay. You will see. <laughs> you say so. Yeah. We'll see. Dude, this looks nice. Man, the outside looks pretty good, man. Outside is good. The inside is what needs the help. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I see what you're talking about now. Yeah. This shed is 270 square feet of ugly. Does, uh, seeing this stuff work? It does not. No. No. I was excited before I walked in here, and now I'm a little bit nervous. All right, let's take a look at this bathroom. All right. Spacious. Is that a scorpion? <laughs> this is so bad. I went into this project thinking it was going to be easy, but the bathroom here flat out scares me. There's only one way and one thing to do. OK. Knock it the hell out. All right. Just get rid of the whole thing and start new. People are going to book a room on a ranch. They're going to expect some country flavor, but they're going to want some modern luxuries as well. We got to find a way to give them the best of both worlds. Despite my wife's opinion, I'm not a caveman. I do have some taste, whether it's maybe manly taste. You know, in our house, we've got some nice hardwoods. I'd like to kind of 
have that feel come out here. We've got an old barn that we took down. We've got a 100-year-old barn wood. I think later on, you and me go on a little scavenger hunt, see what we can find, and then based on what we find, either build some furniture with it, put it on the wall. We'll have to find it first to find out what we want to do. I like your idea. And then I'd love, in the, in the area over there where the kitchen is, you know, a love seat or a sofa and a you know, place to be able to sit down so that you're, it's just not a bedroom. When people decide they want a vacation on a ranch, they're looking for a Western flavor, but they want comfort too. So we'll design this place to be rustic and luxurious. We'll start by tearing out the kitchen and replacing it with a comfortable seating area. Likewise, the bathroom is a complete gut job. So we'll rebuild it from the ground up with a more spacious layout, install brand new fixtures, and cover the walls with actual ceramic tile. And we'll make sure to finish the entire space with Western accents and wood we can salvage from the ranch. So not only will we save money, but the shed will be rustic and refined. You've got some ambitious ideas, though. So I got to ask, what's your budget looking like? We've earmarked eight thousand dollars. You know what? That's it's a lot. Eight thousand dollars is a lot of money. It's just not a lot of money when you think of everything that has to happen in here. We're gonna have to get creative. Yeah. What do you think Tanya's gonna think about it? I think she's gonna love it. I think she's gonna be surprised that we can pull off something, you know, rustic for the dudes and the ladies. Well, perfect, man. Well, I'll tell you what, we're not gonna get anything done sitting around here talking about it. So I'm gonna get out of here, but when I come back, we're gonna demo this bathroom. All right. So today is the day that Luke arrives and we finally get to start work on the he shed. So I'm pumped up to get things rolling. This is Johnny. Johnny. Oh, this is Mario. Nice to meet you. We gotta demo this bathroom. There's a dead scorpion on the floor. What woman do you know wants to take a shower with a dead scorpion on the floor? No, no. It doesn't say luxury at all. But if you find that woman, give her my phone number because I'm interested, by the way. <laughs> all right, we gotta pull that toilet out. We're gonna move it. The sink's gonna have to come out all together. The shower, get rid of it. We're gonna put a new one in there, much more modern design. The floor, rip it up, relay it. All the tile on the wall, I don't know what decade it's from. It needs to go back there, okay? This is gonna be a gentleman's afternoon that we're gonna enjoy together. The good thing about a demolition like this is the only thing we have to worry about is turning off the water. The rest of it is all power. Yeah! Oh, I should have done my bat tuck flip. <laughs> there you go. <sighs> you must be this tall to ride this ring. While Luke goes to buy a sledgehammer in Texas, I'm 1,300 miles away in Greensboro, North Carolina, about to meet Amanda. I'm here to help Amanda transform her brand new she shed into an eco-friendly, income-producing, brand new shed and breakfast. Hi, Amanda. Yes, I'm Sarah. Sarah. It's nice so to meet nice you. Nice to finally meet you. Come on in. Hi. This is my boyfriend, Liam. Hi, Liam. I'm Sarah. How's it going? It's so nice to meet you. You too. How are you feeling about all this um, crazy she shed business? It's uh, really exciting. Yeah, I've been <laughs> recruited for sure. Okay, good. So I know that you want a she shed, but I don't know why you want it. We wanted a way that we could experiment with um, different techniques and natural building and using local materials and what better way than to use property that I already have and maybe create right. something that is a nice a guest bedroom but also maybe extra income through renting. So. And also, um, Amanda works with the Habitat for Humanity and is strongly connected with the building community. And then he works for a natural building company up in Vermont. The two of us together have pretty good construction skills, um, but we just sort of need help with the rest of it, with making Design. it look great. I'm all about that. I would love to yeah. go see it if you don't Let's mind. Let's go see it. Oh my gosh. It's right here. Yeah, isn't it great? It's huge. It's a lot bigger than I expected it to be. I <laughs> but... love it. I, I, I'm just in shock over the size. We wanted it up off the ground so it didn't take up land space, and this way you can actually park underneath it. Genius. I'd really like to see yeah. what is upstairs. Let's do it. Oh my gosh. It really is huge. 420 square feet. Look at all this work you've done in here. Yep. This is the kitchen. Kitchen. What is this? This is the insulation. This is actually just recycled paper that's been blown into the wall. I've heard of this. It costs the same as fiberglass, but it's eco-friendly. We've tried to be really intentional about everything that we've used and all the materials that we've put into it. Instead of using drywall, we'll just use wood. Same thing on the ceiling. We'll avoid paint, and if we do anything at all, we'll do like an all-natural plant-based stain on it instead okay. of a toxic paint. I am 50% excited about Amanda She Shed, and I am 50% nervous 
as hell. She has really clear ideas about what she wants, and I love that she wants it to be environmentally friendly. But that means we're gonna be forced to get really, really creative. This is the bedroom sleeping space. You're gonna create a bed nook over this whole area that you're standing in right now. So this will all be the bed bathroom, full bath four-foot tub just for you. It really is just my size. <laughs> and I found it at a salvage store. OK, so this is what I'm thinking. Let's really make it feel like a tree house. So I'm thinking, how about we just give the illusion that the tree is growing through the floor? OK. With one of the trees that was already on your property anyway. That could be cool. Amanda wants her shed and breakfast to have a spacious living room, a kitchen, bedroom area, and full bathroom. And it all has to be 100% eco-friendly. So we'll wrap the entire place in sustainably harvested wood, and all of our furniture will be made from recycled or eco-friendly materials. And we'll install a tree limb so Amanda's guests will feel like they're sleeping in a tree house. And we only have two weeks and a $10,000 budget. This is gonna be the most challenging she shed I've ever attempted. It'll be a lot of experimentation, and uh, you and I will just have to, we'll have to get our fingernails dirty for sure. Yes, we do. Hey, I can't hear you. Ah, OK, hey, hold on. Hold on one second, because I have no signal whatsoever. I've got the terrain's hotspot. Hold on one second and let me connect. OnStar ready. Ha, I'm already connected. Do you see? You're welcome. Now you can see my face. How are you? How are things going? Ah, uh, getting sweaty, breaking things, you know, the usual. How's your project going? When Amanda said she wanted this to be a green, eco-friendly shed, I didn't realize how far she was taking that. I mean, Luke, no sheetrock, no paint. No paint? If it's not organic, it's not going in this shed, per Amanda's orders. I mean, I feel like I need a whole new bag of tricks for this one. You know, Sarah, if you're nervous, you can just concede defeat now. I I'm OK with that. This may be challenging, but it's going to make the win that much sweeter when we pull this shed off. We'll, we'll see you in a few weeks. Yeah, all right, bye. It is finally uh, the first day of construction. I'm really excited to get started. Sarah and I have come up with some really cool designs, and I'm just really uh, excited and eager to get them going. Look what I got. I come bearing uh, things that we have to carry. But oh, how beautiful good. is this? Yeah, it's really beautiful. I like it. Since everything in this shed needs to be super green, I bought some sustainably harvested pine boards that we can use to close up Amanda's walls. It's about $3,000 more expensive and more time intensive than installing sheetrock, but it's more environmentally friendly. And luckily, Amanda has a few friends on board to help us out today. Holy cow! Do you think you have enough projects going in here? Yeah. We actually put up the metal. We're going to just start doing the wall boards on top of that. Wow, there's a lot of wood to put up in here. Yep, we better get busy. Each piece of wood has a tongue and groove, which will interlock with the last one, giving us a strong, tight seam. We'll want to shoot the nail through the tongue at an angle into the stud behind it. All right, Sarah, we need you to shoot some stuff over here. I would love to shoot some stuff for you, Liam. Keep throwing those boards up there. Have right, you got uh, another 24 hours? Yeah, sure, you bet, buddy. Step ladder. I knew green construction would be more expensive, but I didn't realize how time-consuming it would be. The wood looks great, but I'm starting to wonder, will Amanda ever finish the shed? We've been shedding across the nation, transforming outdoor sheds from boring to fabulous. Right now, I'm in North Carolina with Amanda, a green builder who's looking to make some green of her own with a little treehouse shed and breakfast that she'll rent out on Airbnb. We ditched the sheetrock and are putting up sustainable pine boards for the wall. After eight hours and 40 boards, the sustainable pine walls are finally up. No doubt about it. This eco-friendly she shed is the biggest challenge I've ever faced. This was a lot of work. Yeah, a lot more work, but a lot more satisfying, I feel like. It is, and listen, we couldn't have made it look like a treehouse in here yeah. with sheetrock. I must leave you now right. with a list of chores. I knew you were going to say that. Get the cabinets in, finish the stairs, <laughs> and anything else you anything feel like else? being. <laughs> While Amanda gets busy with her team, I'm off to brainstorm some eco-friendly ideas that won't break the bank. Amanda's eco-friendly she shed is part of a growing movement in shed building that's exploring new takes on sustainable construction. In Atlanta, Julie and Andrew Puckett took this to an extreme when they converted a 1990 Bluebird school bus into a unique home on wheels. They reduced their carbon footprint by reusing the bus, which was destined for the scrapyard. Living in the unconventional space comes with some compromises. 
but playful colors and wood floors and countertops add visual appeal to this unconventional space. But if you aren't ready to commit to this extreme, it's easy to introduce a little eco-friendliness into your shed. Install LED Edison bulbs. For about 10 bucks each, they have a great vintage look, but they're environmentally friendly. And try using pallets as building materials. Not only are they versatile and green, you can often find them for free. This shedder in London, England used them as inspiration to grow his own rooftop veggie garden. While Sarah and Amanda are going green in North Carolina, the Texas he shedders are still hard at work. Rebuilding this bathroom is gonna eat up half of Bob's $10,000 budget, but it's 100% necessary if Bob ever wants to turn a profit off this place. Well guys, job well done. When it's all said and done, this is gonna be the lap of luxury in here. Bob, what do you think, man? Yeah, big time progress for, for day one. All right, Bob, I got some ideas for the he shed. I'm gonna try to find some specialty hardware, source a barn door for in here. In the meantime, I would love for you guys to get a lot more of this done when I come back. I need you to finish the demo in the bathroom, get a plumber, get an electrician, take care of the utilities. Then you can close up the walls and start making this place look livable. Can you guys handle it? You bet. Yeah, I knew you'd be up for the challenge. Across the country, thousands of people are taking back their unused sheds and turning them into fantasy outdoor spaces. Right now, I'm in my home state of Texas with Bob, a cattle rancher, and we're trying to transform his old broken down shed into a clean and comfortable rental property for his shed and breakfast. Got a lot going on today in the shed. Doing the final demo. We're attempting to tear down this whole wall right here. You got the window installed. Instead of there being just a blank one, now there's a new window to bring more light to the sitting area. Yeah, very good. Improved view. Goodness gracious, well, look at this place. God, you've been working. Demo's completely done, it looks like. Yep. You even got insulation in? Yep. This is different framing too, isn't it? It is. We knocked all that down and enlarged the shower. And how's the wife feel? She's ready for the dust to, to clear, I'd say. Is that right? Yeah. Hey, babe. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Speak of the devil. All right, so this is it, huh? This For now. As far as we've gotten. Still looks small. Still smells a little, but... Mm-hmm. Well, all that's true. I'm just a little worried if we're going to get it done, but I guess we'll see. That's why we've got Luke here to back me up and get us across the finish line. We'll make it happen. So we still have a lot to do before we can win over Tanya, but I definitely think she's going to love my next idea, creating a custom piece out of the ranch's store of old barnwood. It's time to give this shed a little ranch flavor. So this is it? Underneath this tarp, I'm assuming. Uh, that barn was over here, and it's, that, that barn stood for, you know, 80, 80 plus years. Let's take a look here. Man, Bob. It's wood. It's good looking wood, but this is a lot thicker than I thought it was gonna be. I mean, this is timber. So most of Bob's barn wood is way too heavy for something like a porch swing. But I have another idea for repurposing this wood if we can find some smaller pieces. How do you feel about making a coffee table for that seating area? Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah? Yeah. So here's what we need, I think. Let's pick out some good pieces, manageable, because this is some heavy stuff, so yeah. try to find something a little smaller, and then we can take those and figure out how to make the coffee table together, yeah? OK. All right, cool. <laughs> I think I got one. Yeah, that's nice. Right? It's a manageable size. It's got a good look to it. It does. So we can find another one kind of like that. We can put them together and make a coffee table. OK. How about this one? It's almost the same size. It's got a little bit of damage on the bottom, but the top is, is good. Oh, yeah, man. Well, let's pull it out and take a look at it. OK. Oh, yeah, Bob. That's going to work out great. Now that we've located our wood planks, we need to look for an accent piece that's just as weathered as the barn wood to really make this coffee table unique. Oh, Bob, guess what? Jackpot. Bingo. Cool, man. This iron hardware could be over 80 years old, which makes it the perfect accent piece for this table. This is going to look great in your online listing. This would cost you thousands and thousands of dollars. Yeah. Here, we're going to make it with our own two bare hands, and we're going to keep the history of the farm right here on the farm. Awesome. We'll start our table off by trimming the wood pieces down to size. Because the wood is so much thicker than our saw blade, we're going to have to cut it twice, once for each side. It almost looks like it was supposed to be one piece of wood, doesn't it? Yep. Then we'll attach a board to the bottom for stability. There we go. 
But there's the top of our table, man. Once that's done, we can attach our accent pieces by drilling holes into the wood and reusing the original bolts. Our coffee table is looking sweet. We just need to find some legs to finish it all off. Can I leave you in charge of that? You make sure it gets done? I'll get it. All right, man. OK. Sounds yeah. great. Bob's designing his shed and breakfast to fit into the ranch setting while offering five-star luxuries. And Bob doesn't have to travel far for inspiration. In nearby Spicewood, Texas, Cypress Valley Canopy Tours has opened several one-bedroom treehouses where guests can relax and unplug. With large windows, lots of exposed wood, and luxurious furnishings, these spaces complement the natural landscape but don't skimp on creature comforts. And even if you don't have these views, you can still turn your backyard shed and breakfast into a serene sleeping space. Create a warm environment and don't be afraid of color. For less than $500, you can surround your room in painted wood siding for an effect that's bold and memorable. Decorate the ceiling. It's no more difficult than painting or wallpapering a wall, but it's a dramatic touch your guest will surely notice. And of course, the shed needs a bed. Make it comfortable and creative. Everyone loves hammocks. Your guests may even forget they're sleeping in a shed. It's been a week since Amanda and I started on the interior of her She Shed treehouse. And when I left her last, I know I left her with a large list of construction things to get done. So I'm really hoping that all of those things have been finished and now we can concentrate on design elements. We've got a lot of stuff going on here today. Unfortunately, Liam had to leave and go back home, but my friends Matt and Hollywood are both here today helping me finish up the walls on the inside. And I've got some other friends here who are gonna start cutting the slate tiles for the countertop. Whoa. This looks like a whole different place. Yeah, isn't it great? Started to get the cabinets in. I love it. This is my favorite part so far. I love the ceiling. It is yeah. beautiful. Isn't it great? It's just poplar. It is really pretty. Oh my gosh! You have the bed nook framed out. The treehouse she shed looks amazing. Amanda got the walls finished, put the ceiling up, and even got started on the kitchen cabinets and the bed nook. I'm thrilled but I have an idea that I think will really make this shed pop on Airbnb. This is a treehouse, and it feels like a treehouse when you're in it, but I really want to give the idea that it's literally in a tree. We'll give it a try. We can find out here in your backyard, right, down trees, big, huge branches yeah. that have fallen off. And there's also the dogwood that we had to take down in order to put up the she shed. OK, All let's right. find it, and okay. then we'll get to cutting it up. Being able to use the dogwood tree that originated in Amanda's backyard for this piece is so cool because it fits the theme of this she shed. It's natural, intentionally used material that won't go to waste. This is the dogwood tree that we took down. Aha! Uh -huh. So that's oh, an it's option. great. Not only do we have to trim this dogwood down to size, but we also have to trim off the leaves and branches and somehow get it up the stairs and into the she shed. Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Whose idea was this? Not mine. I don't know. <laughs> this might actually work. You doubted us? This is oh. isn't the first time we've shoved a tree into a house. <laughs> <laughs> OK. All right. Now what? So I think I just need to sort of move the tree around inside and, and see what makes sense and fits in with the design, but doesn't actually get in the way of people. <laughs> hey, Sarah. Hi. Today, Bob and I went, we found this old 100-year-old reclaimed wood that he used to have on a barn here, and we turned it into a brand new, beautiful coffee table. Check it out. We built that with our man hands. With our man hands. Yeah, yeah, OK. Check this out. What do you think? Wow, worst Christmas tree ever. Hey! Call me if you need some help, all right? Peace. Bye. Even though we have so much work left to do, I was thinking we should plan ahead and we should do some shopping for some furniture. Wayfair.com has an amazing selection. Yeah. They've got tons of eco-friendly stuff. Yeah, it looks like it. What do you think about this coffee table? Yeah, that looks Definitely good. Definitely keeps with the treehouse mm -hmm. vibe, yeah. right? Oh, that's cool. It looks like just a chunk right. of wood. I'm loving this. You say we add it to cart? Sure. These pieces are going to make a wonderful addition to your she shed. I think our break of shopping is over. We have to back, back to work. work. Let's go. Ugh. The shed revolution is on. So many people are discovering the limitless potential of their outdoor sheds, finding endless new ways to transform a simple set of four walls into breathtaking new spaces. Back in North Carolina, Amanda's taking on a huge challenge, building a she shed that's eco-friendly without breaking the bank. Oh, I'm exhausted. 
Uh, we were up all night long working to finish up the shed. I just feel like there's still a lot to do and uh, kind of thinking, is it ever gonna get finished? Hey, Hollywood, what are we making today? Doing some built-ins. Woohoo! Made with formaldehyde-free plywood made in North Carolina. Hollywood Matt created a nice sink cabinet today, too. Someone looks hard at work this morning. Hey! How are you? I'm doing good, how are you? Good, Did you get good rest last night? Oh, yeah. Did you figure anything out about our tree? I think so, yeah. We've come up with some ideas. Can I see it? Yes! All right. Hollywood, Matt up here working, huh? Yeah, working hard already. I love hey. it. Our tree is substantially smaller than yesterday <laughs> in yeah. this department. There's gonna be a built-in sofa right here. Right. So we kind of figured it might look good coming up from that corner above the sofa and maybe ending into the ceiling. This will give us some good options for putting lights from here out into the tree as well. You right. guys have been getting creative. So we're gonna see how it fits. You want me to hold it so you can step back and yeah. see your work? You wanna see what it looks like? Yeah, let's do this Because it looks thing. cool. Oh, yeah. Doesn't it look cool? Looks way better back here. <laughs> it does. You just stay there. All right, we're going to go get we'll, some. We'll see you later. You guys are so funny. <laughs> I am so happy with the way the tree piece came out, and I love Amanda's plans for it. The she shed is coming together beautifully, but in order to get it all done on time, we've got to refocus our attention on the bathroom. OK. Yeah, so I had this just single pendant lamp that mm -hmm. I had left over, and um, I hadn't given it much thought yet, but I was planning on using it somehow as the light in here. Every other room in this space has this really, really special design detail. I mean, what, what kind of story or what kind of history does a toilet have? I mean, mm -hmm. we will be able to utilize the scraps that you have. Oh, all the different wood scraps. Yes. OK. So we just keep reusing everything that's here. OK. Which, by the way, is free. I know, free. right? Most of Amanda's $10,000 budget went towards necessary items, utilities, and building materials. There isn't much left over for decor items, but this is where Building Green lets us save money. We can reuse leftover pieces and still look eco-chic. So I say we just kind of dive straight into the wood pile and start picking out pieces of wood. Yeah, that sounds good. Wood. Once Amanda and I have found the wood pieces that we like, we'll hand them over to Hollywood Matt to run them through the table saw so we get uniform pieces. Next, we mock up our fixture and use the nail gun to put it together. After that, we'll see how it'll look in the bathroom. Oh, yeah. Okay. I like it. I like it a lot. Yep. So now that we have the design of the light fixture figured out, I think if you guys can just finish out all the details on it, add the cables, figure out how you're gonna mount it to the ceiling. Next time, next time I'm back, I will be bringing lots of fun prizes for you. Bob has been hard at work progressing with our He Shed plans. When I was here last, we built a coffee table using all repurposed ranch materials. One of the challenges that we've had is the living quarters, the, the sleeping space, is sunk down about three inches. So we had to make the decision uh, whether to uh, raise the floor, or if we were gonna actually raise the building back. So we uh, decided to do the right thing, in our opinion, and, and raise the building. Everything on a ranch has to be tough. So Bob and his carpenters are building with materials from LP Shed, so the elements won't be a problem. We leveled the floor, slightly out of level. We install this, it's a very durable product. This is a nice floating laminate hybrid. It's also wood. The guys putting in the tape bed texture. Coming along, got the electrical hanging down. Is it hard to walk on those stilts? Yeah. <laughs> In the meantime, I've been out shopping for items that will transform this he shed into the perfect rental property. What's up, Luke? Hey, man. What do you got going on, man? Oh, I got a little project for us today. Okay. Let me run you through this. I had this kind of crazy thought. We've got this beautiful window. We've opened up this space. But we've also just made it very bland besides our view. And then I had this cool idea of maybe throwing up just some wallpaper. Putting cowhide print on the wall would definitely be the last thing that I would think about doing. I know you spend all day looking at cattle, man, and I thought he may not like this, but trust me, Tanya's going to love it. And isn't that what really matters? I'm, I'm game. I bought this wallpaper on Wafer.com for $200. It's not real cowhide. It's final. Let's show Tanya that feminine side you told me about. Bob, what do you think, man? Not too bad for amateurs. 
<laughs> we did all right, didn't we, man? I trusted his taste and his design and that we'd give it a chance. And after seeing it installed, I think I think it's awesome. It looks really cool. Kind of really brings the, the ranch feel inside. So I think we nailed it, man. It looks great. Yeah, I agree. So most of the large design elements on the shed are done. What's left are those final little touches that will attract guests and determine how much money Bob stands to make from his he shed. All right, let's keep working. All right. By working, I mean, let's get some beer. <laughs> We are crisscrossing America, helping homeowners take their unused sheds and transform them into their dream outdoor spaces. When I last saw Bob, we hung the cowhide wallpaper we got from Wayfair. And the last time I saw Amanda, we created a bathroom light fixture for her eco-friendly she shed. These sheds have been a collaborative effort between us and the homeowners. But to complete them, they need to follow our build plans even while we're away. This has been so much work that I'm just starting to uh, think about this thing all the time. So I wake up, and come out here and work when I'm not going to work, and, uh, and it just consumes my life. Johnny brought the, uh, the barn wood in this morning. He got it, uh, he had his guys mill it. It looks awesome. I'm a little stressed out because I feel like there's a lot of work to do. We still don't have the windows in. They're not gonna be here from New York until next Thursday, like just a couple of days before this whole thing is supposed to be finished. Wish me luck. Hi, I'm Justin. I just drove in from Austin. Came out here to, to uh, put up a barn wood ball. All right, Justin has made major, major progress here. I think it looks really great. Oh, it looks awesome. So grateful for good friends and their spare time and when they come over to help me out. So we are finally installing the cork siding. This stuff is so cool. I've never worked with it before, but it's it's thick and rigid and um, it goes up really easily. My friend Adam is here helping me install this stuff now. And I've got other friends here too. There's a lot of us all in one spot, but we're getting it done. So babe, what do you think about design skills so far? Well, I've seen a few things that look Pretty good. I'm, I'm a little bit more impressed than I thought I would be. So what you're telling me is that maybe we are appealing to some of the woman crowd like I was hoping we would? I'd hate to admit it, but maybe you're, you're, you've got something here. And it's snowing, of course. This is the first snow we've had all year. Uh, it's beautiful, but there's still a lot of work to do and the snow's not helping much. Hey, Luke, how you doing? It's time, Sarah. We pulled it off. Are you feeling good about your she shed? I really do. Listen, I have to admit, I was a little nervous in the beginning, but Amanda has done an incredible job. So how are you feeling about Bob's place? Oh, I forgot, you're always confident. Well, it's well-founded confidence, Sarah. Bob's he shed is unrecognizable from the worn out shack he started with. Trying to get a reservation here in a couple of months is gonna be impossible. I'm sure it looks great. I cannot wait to see it, but I've got a ton to get done today, so I will chat with you soon. All right, Sarah, good luck with your she shed. Bye. Hey, Bob. Hey, what's up, Luke? Good to see you, man. Good, man. How are you? I'm doing all right, yourself? Hey, Sarah. How are you? I'm good. How are you? It's so good to see you. Good. Come on in. I have a big task for you. Okay. I need you to get out of here. So you go and take the day off. I need you to go have some fun, take the day off. You go rest. No right. work. Yes, ma'am. OK, bye. Bye. Now it's time for me and Luke to add in a few design surprises, which we hope will attract some guests when the shed and breakfast open for business. Oh, Amanda is going to love this. How do you feel? I mean, you look great, just look a little stiff. Bob? Two weeks ago, I met Bob, a cattle rancher who wanted to transform his scorpion-infested shed into an elegant suite and shed and breakfast. Despite his wife's concerns... I'm just a little worried if we're gonna get it done. Bob took the lead on this project. Bob wanted his he shed to appeal to more than just hunters. So right off the bat, we demolished the bathroom and replaced the broken down kitchenette with a seating area, which we furnished with a coffee table made from salvage materials we found right here on the ranch. Bob overcame lots of hurdles, from a shaky foundation to Tanya's worried looks. But with more barn wood and some creative wallpaper, we completed this look and stuck to his $10,000 budget. After all that work, will Bob's shed and breakfast open for business? Cool here, Bob, man. How you doing? Good, man. You enjoy the day off? Yes, sir. All right, man. Well, guess what? You're about to see something really cool. You've done a lot of the work on it, but I put some final touches on it that I think you're really going to love, man. All right. Bob, this is your he shed and breakfast. Go check it out. Oh, man. Dang. Tanya's gonna go nuts. I mean, this looks like any fine boutique that we've 
stayed at anywhere. That's unbelievable. Bob, what do you think, man? Man, it's awesome. Isn't this cool? I can't believe it. So good. It used to be raw. Now it's refined. The crummy old kitchenette that was in here, that's a distant memory. My favorite part is the little lounge area. Check out the great sofa from Wayfair.com. You got the coffee table we made once High again. Hey, right, man, it looks great. It really came out good. My goal for the shed and breakfast was to bring the ranch in, have it be rustic, but also all the modern amenities that you would find in a nice hotel, and we totally nailed it. I guarantee you Tanya's going to be impressed with this. It's time for the moment of truth. What will Tanya think? Well, Tanya, I remember when this first started, you were a little apprehensive about his skills on design. Yeah. So I got to ask now, what do you think? How do you do? A plus plus. Hey! All right. He pulled it off, didn't he? He totally pulled it off. I can't believe it. I never thought that Bob could actually pull <laughs> off this modern look out here in the country. Whoa, get out of town. <laughs> I never thought it would look this good. It's pretty good. Look huh? how much room we have. And no scorpions. And no scorpions and bugs. Cockroaches, baby, you did a great job. Thank you. I love it, love it, love it. Can you see you guys getting your return on here and making some profit off this place? Oh, yeah, with, without a doubt. I mean, this is nicer than any hotel in town. Plus, you get the scenery, you know, being out in the country. Who wouldn't want to stay here instead of a hotel? Seeing it finished and seeing you smiling makes me proud, and I'm glad we did it. Me too. Thanks, babe. Isn't this warm and inviting? Wonderful. Cozy okay. outdoor space, mm -hmm. covered, comfy. I think it's time to bring some people over here and show them how cool it really is. OK. Luke revealed his rustic and refined he shed, which is good because now he can check out my eco-friendly she shed. Two weeks ago, I met Amanda and took on my biggest she shed challenge yet, designing a fully sustainable, income-producing treehouse shed and breakfast for Airbnb. Right off the bat, Amanda's learned that building green comes at a cost. Materials are expensive, and it's time consuming. And she faced other challenges, from bad weather to delayed building supplies. But with help from her friends and lots of salvaged material, she found a way to stick to her principles and her $10,000 budget. Amanda's shed is 100% green, and with my finishing touches, I hope she thinks it's gorgeous. Amanda, get over here. Are you ready for this? Yeah, I'm totally ready. All this hard work, it looks so amazing from the outside. But I am dying for you to see the inside. I want you to go in and check it out, and I will be up in a minute. Oh. These rails that they just finished up. Looks awesome. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. Looks like you see in a magazine. Oh, my little dogwood tree that we had to cut down to build this place. I feel like it's appropriate to have its own little spot here. I can't wait any longer. Sarah. I'm dying to know what you think. This is awesome. You love it? Yes. I love my treehouse she shed. It's amazing. I mean, just all the touches and stuff that Sarah did to it. Look at the table we ordered from Wayfair.com. It looks even better than the picture. I just want to sit down and just hang out here. I kind of knocked my own socks off. Like, <laughs> I feel like it is gorgeous. Just, Shall we check out the kitchen? Yeah, let's. OK. Let's talk about how cozy this kitchen is. I know. And the lighting in here is beautiful. I really wanted to use Edison bulbs, because mm -hmm. I, I like the way that they look. But they use a lot of energy. So right. they actually make Edison bulbs that are LED. I pay for the utilities in here, then it's you know hardly any energy being used. Eco-friendly. We met that challenge like at every turn. Right. And it just turned out so pretty. Can we please talk about our favorite part? It's gorgeous. And the big window. Yeah, I mean, it just looks so cozy. Your guests have their own personal closet. And then we are to the bathroom. I love that you use corrugated metal on the walls, but it still looks luxurious. We made that light fixture. I know, it uses every kind of wood that we've used on the project. It's beautiful. Yeah. This is a tiny bathroom. Yeah. But it's not lacking any details nope. whatsoever. It's so pretty. Your guests are really, really, really going to love staying here. I'm going to love staying here. I'm excited that we were able to do this and that I have something now that I can that we can show people that you can do all natural and you can do sustainable and energy efficient and still have it be beautiful and, and you can still do it within a budget. I'm just so excited and 
so proud of it and so so ready to show people. I can't wait to ask Amanda's friends if they would choose the she shed over a hotel. The tree, that's our favorite part. I like the uh, deck out here and the view that you're gonna have in the uh, summertime. Heck yeah, I would stay here. <laughs> I would definitely vacation just to come here. I would live here, I love it, I love it. Amanda's planning on renting her shed and breakfast out for $350 per week. So, after six months of bookings, the she shed will have paid for itself. Isn't this awesome? Yeah. yeah. Sweet. We're gonna stay in here for a while. <laughs> yeah, right. Back at the ranch, Bob's rounding up a posse of friends to come check out his brand new shed and breakfast. And for 150 bucks a night, you can stay there too. I'll spend the night. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'd even want to take a shower in there. It's really wonderful. You can't make wood look like this. You just got to get it time and nature and exposure. And that's something you just can't replicate. That memory and, and that history would still be left in the place. And it it almost makes me cry. <laughs> so Bob is planning on renting out his shed and breakfast for about $150 a night. So even if he only rents it out on weekends, thank you, Jeremy, Girl. he'll pay off his investment in only eight months. Solid. Cheers. Thank you, guys. Cheers, guys. To the heat shed. To the heat shed. shed. Hey, Sarah, what's up, girl? I am so proud of what we have accomplished here in North Carolina. You know, Amanda gave me an enormous challenge in that every single nail, every board, every everything had to be environmentally friendly. Do you have any idea what kind of challenge that is? Because that is not in my bag of tricks. But we have succeeded. I have learned so much. And I am so, so proud of the She Shed. It has turned out beautiful. She wanted an income property that was going to pull people in so she could make some money, and I think we did it. And an eco-friendly she shed? That seems like an oxymoron. And you know what? Maybe it is. I don't even know what an eco-friendly nail is. This is the closest one I can think of. Nonetheless, I think you pulled it off and you did great. Now, Bob, this guy gets up too early in the morning to work. He has to get up and feed the chickens. Then he goes and runs a cattle farm and a hunting ranch. But you know what? We did it. We pulled it off. I have no doubt this Shed and Baptist is gonna turn a profit. I saw the pictures and I thought the space did not seem like you were gonna walk outside and be out in the middle of nowhere. Luxury at its finest. It looks plush, it looks expensive, it looks comfortable. I'm impressed, it's really, really nice. Thank you so much, I really appreciate that. It was really important for Bob to keep the history of the ranch intact and kind of bring the ranch into the shed. And I think we did it just perfectly. So thank you so much. And speaking of, I'm gonna go enjoy a little bit of those touches of the ranch right now. I am gonna go hang out in this treehouse before I have to go back home. Talk soon. All right, bye.